So it's 7.1.5 and everyone is saying just how awful marksman hunters are. And the stats kind of show it on, you know, well, uh, or Warcraft logs, it's showing that um, <clears throat> marksman hunter is either the very bottom or within the bottom four for all DPS specs as of 7.1.5 on mythic, you know, 75th percentile, that kind of thing. Uh, in fact, I can actually show you um, Trial of Valor. Well, I'll show you the statistics page here. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so we go to statistics. And uh, sorry about the vortex there. As you can see, we've got Marksmanship Hunter for like 75th percentile <clears throat> for 7.1.5 aggregate using normalized scores. This is all bosses for Mythic, uh, for all item levels for Trial of Valor. And um, <clears throat> as you can see, like it's just really bad. Beast Mastery is not all that great either. In fact, Survival outpaces them both, which is kind of a shock. But I have an idea in my head that I'm going to want to try and you know put out there, and I hope you'll entertain the, uh, the thought process. I think a lot of this is a lot of marksmanship hunters are trying to force their old paradigm into the new paradigm. They're trying to force their old rotation into the new way of doing things, and they're just not, they haven't figured it out yet. Um, so what I'd like to go into a little bit is just the thought process here, and let's start off with the talents. Sidewinders now only gives you 35 focus, and if you... Uh, you know, if you take into criti you know, critical focus into consideration, Sidewinders generates five additional. So now instead of generating 55, it generates 40. So that's a 15 focus uh, reduction. Barrage is also changed so that it no longer has uh, the primary target being hit with harder damage. It's just been reduced, you know, down across the board. And uh, so there's that. <coughs> they also changed Patient Sniper. Uh, they change the vulnerable things, so it's always six seconds, uh, I believe. So vulnerable always marks them for uh, six seconds, or makes them vulnerable for that long. But patient sniper makes vulnerable damage increase uh, by 10% every one second. So you have a maximum of 160% bonus damage in the last second of patient sniper. So there's that as well. So... That means things are a little weird, and uh, so what I'd like to propose instead is um, changing things up a little bit. I never liked Barrage, and I never liked the fact that it's part of our main rotation, and so, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give Murder of Crows a chance, and, but, you know, we still need to have some sort of um, AoE. Now, Sidewinders is not good for AoE, uh, because you have the charges on it, you know, only two charges and they recharge every, in my case, 10.1 seconds with my haste. It's down from 12, you know, the base is 12. Trick shot itself is the default way to go here, I think, when it comes right down to it. This has a hidden AoE in it that a lot of people don't realize, is that aim shot will now also ricochet and hit all vulnerable targets for 30% of normal damage. If there are no other vulnerable targets, the damage of your next aim shot <clears throat> sorry, is increased by 15%. So, on single target fights, it's good. On multi target fights, it's fine. In fact, it's a little better. Uh, so, because it ricochets and hits everything that's vulnerable. Right? And if it's vulnerable and you have patient sniper and it's the last second of patient sniper, you're hitting for 160% bonus damage. That brings lock and load into consideration. What do we do with this? Now, I tried with true aim, um, and you know this is good for a fight like Gwarm, I think. You're doing 20% bonus damage, you know, 2% stacking up to 10 times, limit one target. But on any fight where you're having to switch targets a lot, like Odin is a good example. Heroic Odin and above, where you have like Helia coming in in phase two, and you have to target switch all the time with the rune shapers and all that probably not a good idea. And also I considered the fact that lock and load, uh, you can fit more 
uh, aim shots into a vulnerable window when you have lock and load procs and if you can do that that means like you know you have a good chance of your last aim shot of the vulnerable window hitting just at the last second of it and getting that nice crispy 160 percent bonus damage so i'm thinking lock and load is the way to go i'm just thinking my way through this you know talking my way through this thing here um you still want lone wolf because steady focus um you're never going to really do, be doing many arcane shots in a row you know two in a row uh careful aim you know it's it's just you know the top 80 percent you know and that's kind of that's kind of crappy um i like to have the bonus all across the board and not have to worry about managing a pet so those three changes or those three talents you know lock and load we're going to keep patient sniper we're going to keep uh, barrage we're going to try out murder of crows murder of crows is really nice especially when you consider um single target fights or fights where there's ads where you can throw a murder of crows on there you know it's not going to last more than you know 15 seconds the you know the the, the ad is going to go down quick <clears throat> and it'll reset the cooldown so that's always good managing that takes a little bit of skill and getting away from barrage so you ha get away from those accidental uh, fucking pulls it's crazy I, I i can't wait to get rid of this and ditch it forever i haven't tried volley yet but i think murder of crows is good the a good default uh way to go because you know just a lot of fights are really are single target and you want to put a lot of damage down range in that first you know in those 15 seconds um so getting away from sidewinders means we're back to an arcane and multi-shot type of uh situation so on single target you're going for your opener with you open up with you know a potion of deadly grace murder of crows and like or you can you can precast a wind burst at one second on the pull timer <clears throat> but as soon as it goes off get that murder of crows out now the entire rotation revolves around this proc <coughs> marking targets so the marking targets proc right here where we have four seconds left hitting arcane shot marks the target and we have marked shot but the marking targets proc seems to happen a lot when you're not marking targets however you want to while vulnerable while not while dumping focus you're hitting our aim shot so you know just at, at exiting combat here what we're going to be wanting to do is um you know in our new rotation this is going to take some getting used to for a lot of people because you know we've gotten used to the sidewinders rotation uh i'm going to wait for murder of crows to come off cooldown so here we go uh you know wind burst murder of crows true shot and just start you know uh arcane marked you see how it's still procced arcane marked you're not hitting that aim shot yet arcane marked you're still marking targets arcane marked arcane marked arcane marked arcane oh i got i have zevran's hunger hunger so arcane marked now it's not procced so i'm going to do a couple aim shots arcane marked arcane and then i'm going to hit those use those uh charges up marked arcane marked make sure i get my wind burst out because those are really high hey it procced again arcane marked use up those uh charges of lock and load marked marked arcane and now i don't have a marked shot so i'm going to use up my vulnerable window with two aim shots arcane marked arcane marked so i'm watching for the arcane shot procs the marking target procs um and literally like on my Gorm kill last night i sat there and i literally went back and forth arcane marked arcane marked arcane marked because during the heroism phase of the fight i literally had non-stop marking targets procs it was kind of crazy and the, i think the higher your haste is the more times you're going to have that um and that comes from uh your auto shots um i think the auto shot thing here yeah uh, it, it's a passive marking targets I believe I can't remember where it is um, your auto shots have a chance to cause your next arcane or multi-shot to apply hunters mark 
Carnotaurus Mark activates Marked Shot. So have a chance, and we don't know what that chance is. It doesn't say in the tooltip. So there's that. That's the one rotation is where it's like <coughs> you're literally going for uh, you're using your mark shots. Your mark shot actually has a higher DPS per um, uh, execute time than your aim shots, except at the very last, very end of your vulnerable. So your aim shots at the end of vulnerable will have a higher thing. But you want to consume your marking targets procs, and you want to be able to... That's your DPS while moving thing. You're not using your aim shot near as much. So... Starting off the fight, you know, we got, okay, here we go, wind burst, there, it, it just procced right away, but now we don't, okay, we gotta get the crows out there, aim shot, aim, you know, we're running out of vulnerable time, so now we're building up our focus again, just keep on building up focus, well, crap, there we go, arcane marked, arcane, and wind burst, get that out there. Arcane, and now we're focused at ca capped, and it was just like, okay, now we're just doing crap damage with, well, I guess we were vulnerable for a while there because of Windburst. See, and that's the other thing, you, you, I, I like to keep Windburst in reserve for getting vulnerable if needed. And so basically, you're wanting to set up this, uh, the marking targets proc, Arcane, Marked, and then if you're still marking targets, go back to your Arcane and do... Mark shot. Now, I'm a little different from most people, I think, because I do have Zeverum's Hunger, and I will proc um, that, you know, it's a 15% chance to not remove Hunter's Mark when I cast uh, multi-shot, or Mark shot. So, sometimes I can do it twice in a row, sometimes I can do it three times in a row, that kind of thing. So, there's that. Now, your um, multi-target rotation is somewhat different, and it all comes back to this trick shot here. So, here we go. We start up, and we instantly get a proc. We don't want to use up our our, our um, lock and load procs yet. Multi-shot sets it up. Marked shot sets it up even further. Now they're all vulnerable. Now, all of these shots are ricocheting on all of the vulnerable targets. So, it's multi, marked, aimed, 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 until you're out of vulnerable. Multi, marked, aimed aimed and without procs on lock and load you could probably get three now here's the thing about this you gotta understand if there's one target you're hitting it for five focus with aim shot or the arcane if there's only one target and you multi-shot it you're only getting two focus so two targets means a multi-shot generates only four so that's still less than arcane right crit shots with arcane shot also if you uh i think it's a thing here um yeah arcane shot critical strikes generate five additional focus so your crits there generate you know and you can just take your crit strike chance 23 percent and add that to or t divide it in half and add that to this for the amount of focus you get so it generates five plus another 12.5 percent or 1.5 so 6.5 focus per arcane shot here because crits will generate five more so on average you'll get 6.5 every arcane shot because your average crit chance is 23%. So 6.5 here, that means that you'd have to have at least four targets to exceed the amount of focus gen. So what this is telling you is, what you know, what the game is telling you, what Blizzard is telling you is don't multi-shot unless there's at least four targets. And you know, as far as focus gen is concerned, now you could do three target multi-shots just to set up this, you know, the damage rotation, but, you know, Mark, man, I just had three, uh, three procs on my, or two procs on my Zephyrus Hunger, and then you aim shot to burn your focus, so you're multi-shotting to generate focus, Mark shot to set up the aim shot with the, pay, the, the trick shot, so anything that's vulnerable gets hit by the aim shot, 30%, right? And so... I would even, with the Zevram's Hunger procs, I would even still do a mark shot. See, I just got a proc. I'd still do an aim shot after that and weave back and forth. So, there we go. Multi, marked, aimed. I, I got a proc there. Marked, aimed. Then do some multi-shotting again. Marked, aimed. 
marked, multi marked, and I didn't have the focus for it. So if you don't have focus for an aim shot, then you want to multi shot again and then aim shot while it's still vulnerable from the, the previous mark shot, right? So you can use the last half of your vulnerable time. And so that, you know, it adds a little thinking to the process, right? And in fact, you can multi and then aimed again. See, I just got another aim shot out just at the last moment there. So you can even go back and forth. Multi, aimed, marked, aimed, multi, generate focus to get that second aim shot out before the end of the vulnerable window. That seems like a better rotation. But you see how I have it in like a, a line here. So five, four, well, no, not vulnerable anymore. Three, four, five to get some focus, then four for another aim before it's done with vulnerable. And that, if I was, I'm not, I'm clicking right now and I shouldn't be. But you see that rotation there, and this is only four targets, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just putzing around. I'm sustaining 570k. Now, just so you guys know where I am at 8, 881 item level. That includes a bloodthirsty instinct and unstable arcano crystal. Um, I haven't done any sort of uh, re-simming about like stat weights. Um, I'm not sure if it's worth it for me to get a uh, a uh, plus 200 agility gem yet because you know mastery seems to you know was outweighing agility as you know as far as that was concerned. I probably should get a you know plus 200 agility regardless and just put it into that Zevram's hunger because that's not going away anytime soon. But um, but yeah. Those are your new rotations, and I think that's the reason why you're seeing what you're seeing with this, because people are not putting their new rota that new rotation into practice. They're trying to use the old rotation that they're used to. At least a good portion of hunters are. Now, are hunters on the top tier? No, but I think that they're going to be around the balanced druid, arms warrior, feral druid area, frost DK area maybe once they get their shit straight. A lot of classes got buffed. A lot of classes didn't get changed in their fundamentals. We got changed in our fundamentals and we're still reeling from it. So don't panic. Just try this out. See how it works. Leave comments in the description. See what it, Tell me if I'm totally wrong here. And uh, I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Hell, if you don't like what I'm saying, you know, t give me feedback. Let me know. Let's work on this, guys.